We just want to give them some teasers. <laughs> All right. We are now live. So we're going to wait a few moments for people to come on because we are officially live. But as they do, I just want to take this opportunity to say welcome to the Couples Academy page. My name is Sasani. And I'm Danielle Pettiford. And we are the co-founders founders of Couples Academy, which is a relationship-based learning institute, which is committed to helping couples by placing them on the path to fulfillment. And for the last 12 years, we've been working with couples all over the country, all over the world, really helping them to impact their relationships. Now, we have a strong web footprint. We have a website, we have social media, and we used to do Facebook Lives like every single week. And we realized that there's a need and a high demand for it. So we decided that we were going to launch it uh, up again, but we wanted to do something uniquely different. Uh, last week, as you know, we had Dr. Donovan, who came on and kind of shared with us the importance of living a healthy life and the impact that has on your relationship. So a healthy life leads to a healthy relationship. And we're in part two of that. And we are privileged to have his wife with, it, with him. They are the co-founders and the co-owners of their own business. Anwan Regenerative Center, which is in Tucker, Georgia, and they help individuals and couples and families uh, have phenomenal health. And so tonight we wanted to talk about what impact women's health have on relationships. Isn't that a great topic, Danielle? I think it's a very interesting topic. I can't wait to hear what the doc has to share with us. <laughs> well, without further ado, let's introduce our guests, Dr. Donovan and Jacqueline uh, Christie. Welcome to the show. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. We can't wait to talk about uh, some of these issues that are impacting a woman's health. Let's do that. Let's, let's just dive right into it. Listen, Doc, I don't know about you, but being in the relationship space, it has been said that women are just crazy. We're not crazy. <laughs> they are wrapped up, packed up with <laughs> emotions and hormones, and oftentimes that can have an impact on the relationship. Now, I don't know if that's a fallacy, if that's a myth, if there's any truth to that. But from a from a medical perspective, is it true that women are crazy? Come on now. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't call them crazy. I, I do say, however, and I, I say this um, in a joke all the time, that a woman is a different person every day. And I say that because her hormones are different every day. Um, you know, from, from the onset of puberty, um, when the brain says, hey, you, it's time to grow up, and then um, sends messages to the ovaries to start producing estrogen, um, and then, then she goes through having a menstrual cycle. But every day of that menstrual cycle, there's a different level of hormones. And so in that aspect, a woman is a different person every day because the impact, the, the hormones impact your mood, um, your temperament, um, <laughs> and a whole lot of other things that we'll discuss. And I think well, also, since you went there, since you went there, and this is a relationship-based conversation, mm -hmm, right? Is that mm -hmm. why we're talking about hormones and women and stuff? Because it's a relationship-based conversation we're having here. So mm -hmm. here's my question. Since you're saying that the hormones change every day, is, it, is there some brain connection or emotion connection that happens with a woman. In other words, if we're if if our spouses offend us or hurt, or hurt our feelings, does it somehow affect our hormones at some point? Well, no, not at not at that particular time. I mean, you know, obviously hormones that are impacted by stress would be adrenaline and cortisol. Um, but a woman is going through a cycle, right? And so typically when she has a menstrual cycle, or hormones or estrogen, let's say, let's pick estrogen. Estrogen has a lot of effects. It's got a lot of receptors in the brain that impacts mood. Um, that's why certain times if a woman has um, high estrogen level, she can be anxious, um, she can be irritable. And so those are definite receptors that estrogen binds in the brain and can induce those types of um, behaviors. Awesome. Wow, wow. You know, I was joking earlier about women being crazy, but really transitioning into this topic on hormones and, and emotions and things of that nature. Tell me, Doc, what are some of the symptoms that women experience uh, when dealing with their hormones or dealing with menopause, let's say? Because that's something that uh, oftentimes couples face at a certain season in their marriage 
menopause. So how does that impact the relationship and what are the, the symptoms? Well, I can address that. Um, well, some of the symptoms of menopause would be the most obvious one I think that everybody hears about, hot flashes. Um, not so obvious would be anxiety, depression. You know, we may not always relate that to menopause, but a lot of times it is because of that hormonal drop that will cause anxiety and depression. Also, um, you can have effects in your, you know, to your libido, decreased libido, um, and the, the brain fog, the um, forgetfulness, that type of thing can also be affected by menopause. Um, also sleep. Yeah. Sleep is a, sleep is a biggie. Sleep is a biggie. And that is mostly due to a drop in progesterone. And so so is something that every woman at some point will go through. Is there a way to skip over that season? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, when we go through a different, when am I going to go through menopause and when will, will my libido drop? Can we answer that? <laughs> everybody's different and every woman goes through it at different times different you know different um ages that's why there is a range and not just you know okay at 50 you're going to be at menopause it's it's more of a range it can be as early as like 38 and it can be as late as 56 57 <laughs> you know so it's a range we're all different and um it's been shown that is it uh, japanese women some never go through menopause because of the diet. So they really? don't experience what? those, those um, extreme symptoms as American women, um, you know, will experience because of the American diet. So you mean, uh, uh, wait a minute. So are you, are you saying like a healthy, they, I've heard that the Mediterranean diet is one of the best diets on the planet. So if you're talking about Asian women, that's a completely different type of diet from a different part of the world. Yeah. What would your recommendations be for, I guess, a healthy nutritional plan for women, whether they experience it or not? I mean, I'm just curious. This is intriguing. I've never heard this before. Well, well, Japanese women, as Jackie was saying, have lower symptoms. And that's because of the soy in their diet. They eat a lot of soy. Oh. And so the soybeans and the soy preparations that they have kind of keeps their estrogen levels at a good one, at a good level. So they don't experience this major drop. Okay, what exactly is menopause? The ovaries stop making the hormones that it made for the, from puberty on till say 45, 50. So when it stops, there's this drastic change and the body then starts experiencing the hot flash if it's like, what's going on? But also heart disease. Heart disease comes on when you, when you don't have estrogen. A woman is protected until she goes through menopause of heart disease because estrogen lowers cholesterol and it increases the good cholesterol. And so it's somewhat protective. But once a woman goes through it, she catches up real quick to the man for heart disease. Wow. So what can we do about that? That sounds pretty scary to us young bucks out yeah. here who have yet to reach the menopause stage, what can we eat? Can we eat soy? Would that help us? Well, I think in this country, this soy is not very good because it's genetically modified, like 99% of it. But if you can get soy from Japan or organic soy, then I think that's a good thing to do. Um, I do recommend organic soy milk for women um, to deal with some of the symptoms. But there are supplements that you can take that have pl um, plant-based estrogen, things like Vitex extract and red clover and black cohosh. Those are all supplements that has estrogenetic effect. So you don't get that big drop of estrogen and then all these symptoms come on. We didn't even talk about bone density, but when you lose your estrogen, your bone density goes down, your bone becomes more brittle. So that's why we do regenerative medicine. So what we do is we replace or restore the estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone to a level of a woman, let's say, who's in her 30s. And what that does, it prevents them from experiencing these deleterious um, effects of aging. Okay, so I have a question about what I think you're saying about the regeneration. Is that the hormone therapy replacement? And if so, yes, okay. I've heard mixed reviews about it. 
some really scary things about it that if you're taking the hormone replacement, you could actually cause cancer. Is there any validity to that? <laughs> well, let me let me explain what happened with that. And this is a this is a great question, Danielle. And this is this is one of the things that there's a lot of women who are afraid to get to uh, start any type of estrogen products because of that slight increased risk of cancer. Now, they did a study back in 2004, and it created a whole lot of um, commotion um, because women who were re receiving um, synthetic, synthetic hormones, which was Premarin is what it was called, they found that these women who were on Premarin, when they followed, they stopped the study because these women had higher rates of um, slightly higher rates of breast cancer because they were on these synthetic hormones. Now, the, the Premarin is made from horse urine. Um, it's a pregnant horse that they isolate the estrogen from the urine of a pregnant horse. And that's what they were substituting for human estrogen. And it's very different in structure. It's called estradiol. So people who were on this horse urine estrogen, yes, they did experience um, higher rates of cancer, higher rates of, um, of, of heart disease, because it, it's not the same replica. It's not the same hormone that your body produced when you were younger. So I don't ever use synthetic um, hormones. I use what we call bioidentical hormones. And those hormones is the exact replica. It's made in a compounding pharmacy, and that is what we substitute. And that's relatively safe. Okay. Could you do me a favor? Tell us more about your practice because, you know, there are a lot of doctors out there and physicians out there, but not quite like you and what you two specialize in. So can you kind of unpack for us what Anwan Regenerative Center is really all about? And sure. in addition to what, what are the other areas that you cover? Yeah. Well, um, we have a regular practice that we see regular primary care patients. The Regenerative Center is a concierge practice. So when you really care about your health, you don't want to be rushed in and out of a doctor's office with 10 to 15 minutes of FaceTime. You really want to be able to have a personal relationship with your physician. And that's what concierge medicine is all about. So what we do, we, every, every one of our patients that come in the Regen Center, we do their full panel. And these are usually people who are established, you know, who really are self um, health conscious and um, are going to take the advice that, you know, you get good health through good nutrition, through exercise, through spirituality, and, um, and actually, um, you know, balancing your hormones to a youthful level. And we have, you know, hundreds of people who, who believe in that, and they're willing to, to pay the extra money to be in a concierge practice. And actually, a lot of, a lot of the patients do seek out um, concierge practices, you know, because they're tired of the traditional type of practice where they have to wait or they, um, you know, they have to wait a long time to get an appointment. When they do get an appointment, they only have minimal access and a very short time, you know, with the provider. So with the concierge medicine, they, you know, they may have 30 to 60 minutes with the provider and they also have access beyond the appointment. So they can contact, you know, they have they get the cell phone number and they are able to contact and ask questions by text or even by Marco Polo. Mm. So it's, you know, it's more access and also um, a diff different types of services that are available, such as um, skin type um, services, uh, services with laser. Um, you know, we can, for instance, instead of just prescribing like antibiotics or something for acne, we can treat with, um, with laser, we can treat ac acne with laser. Um, also skin tightening. We also have massage therapy services. In the um, practice. And chiropractic therapy services. Mm -hmm. So we also have a gym in the practice. So it's, you know, it's, it's pretty different. So we offer our patients um, more than a traditional practice. We also offer pharmaceutical grade supplements um, to, so patients don't have to worry about getting um, supplements from say Walmart or Kroger's and um, if they're actually um, affected, you know, so we, we make sure we get it from a, a, um, a company that we know prov can provide high quality supplements and they only provide to physician offices.
Why you say you do more than the average practice, I think more is an understatement. You can yeah. <laughs> And I understand you have a conference coming up. Tell us a little bit more about your conference. Okay, well, the um, this is our first time we're doing this conference because, you know, we've done lots of um, presentation for the community um, through our nonprofit organization, The Picture of Health. But this particular conference is a whole day conference. It's coming up on January 5th. We wanted to do it early in the year when people are somewhat committed to their resolutions. So when, but a lot of people don't know what to do. And there's a lot of things that are out there, dietary fads and, um, you know, different um, um, processes that people follow that are not just not healthy. So what we, what we plan on doing is to show people this is what you need to do in 2019 to lose weight, have more energy, improve your libido, restore your joints, and it's a whole day of education. And um, you know, we, we welcome couples. This, this should be done. I mean, I think every couple, this could be a Christmas gift because there is a fee. Um, there's lunch and breakfast that's provided and we're at the Marriott Century Boulevard in Emory. So we're inviting, um, you know, the first 200 people who can come. They're going to go come away with some valuable information that will That's impact the them for the rest of their life. Yeah. So how much is it? This sounds awesome. What What's the fee? For a couple, it's two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Awesome. One twenty nine per person. One twenty nine per person. And it's all day, so starting at eight and ending at five. So it's a power pack day where specifically can they go online to find out more about the event and register so they can go to um bit.ly slash help me live well they can oh. also mm -hmm. and I, uh we'll put that on the screen a little while they can also um go to www.an1regionnow.com our website so and one a N W A N. Okay. It stands for all natural wellness and nutrition. And that's, it's been that name since we started the practice back in 2002, because I've always had a holistic mindset an integrative mindset, a functional medicine mindset, all based on prevention, because it's always better to prevent disease than to deal with the sequela of a disease. Right. So, it's just that the, the more you practice prevention is the more you'll keep away heart disease and cancer um, because we know that being obese cr increases your chance of cancer, especially colon cancer and breast cancer. Yeah. You know, um, that's one of the things that I wanted to comment on. Danielle had mentioned, you know, does taking hormones increase your risk of cancer? Being obese increases your risk of cancer. Um, if I had to put into percentages, percentages, um, you may say there's a slight risk, maybe a 0.001% risk with, um, with hormonal replacement therapy, but with obesity, you have a 3% risk. So it, it's, a, it's a much higher, higher um, incidence when you are obese. Also, you have a 40% risk if you have um, the BRCA gene, if you have the breast cancer gene, gene one or gene two, or you have a 20% risk if you have a first degree relative, a mother or a sister who's developed breast cancer. So there's a whole lot of other things that are much higher for you to get cancer um, that are things that you can change and some things you can't change. So, you know, it sounds like the hormone replacement therapy is the thing to do. But Absolutely. I know what you mean, then, yeah. I'm 42. I've got four kids. And so my energy is low. I'm sure my libido is sinking. What do I need to know about this therapy and why do I need it? Okay, so you would be what we classify as a perimenopausal woman because you're still having periods. So you're not menopausal until your period goes away. Right. Then you are <laughs> menopausal. You That's spend one year <laughs> of no period. Yeah, one more year? You no, no, one year of no period, you're menopausal. Gotcha. You're menopausal. But perimenopause starts somewhere in the mid 30s, usually, and it can go as long as mid 50s. When the period finally stops, that's when you're menopausal. So what happens is that each month, as the younger you are, you'll ovulate each month. So you'll produce progesterone. 
But when you get into your 40s, some periods don't have an ovulation. You're not ovulating anymore. So what you have is just estrogen being produced by the ovaries, but no progesterone to balance it. And we all have to be in balance. So if you don't have progesterone there being coming out and, and stabilizing the uterus, then you're going to have um, periods that are like 20 days long instead of five. So you get, you bleed more, you know, and that's what we call an estrogen dominant state. And so many women in their forties, because they're not ovulating all the time, they develop fibroids in their uterus because estrogen stimulates that uterus and it grows fibroids. They also get breast disease, fibrocystic breast disease and scarring in the breast. That's all based on excessive amount of estrogen in relation to progesterone. Wow. wow. Listen, we had some comments coming. First of all, Melaine Sutton, who's a dear friend of us, who's a health guru, said, wow, I, you know, we wish all doctors were like you, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, so that's a huge compliment coming from her. Then we have Devon Stanfield, who says, is becoming a vegan, does it guarantee that you'll lose weight, and can the vegan lifestyle reduce your chances of getting cancer? Mm, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah. well, there's yeah. no guarantee <laughs> um that we, not, i mean there are different types of vegans mm -hmm. you know um i would say if you're a raw vegan that it's guaranteed but a lot of a lot of people will you know switch to vegan or vegetarianism and um they end up eating too much carbs and too much bad carbs and end up gaining even more weight than when they were eating meat so it, it's, you know, there's no guarantee. And a lot of uh, vegetarian foods are, are processed just, you know, just as badly. So it's- Yeah, not... like those Boko burgers, you know, they, they, <laughs> they basically are grinding up natural foods, but then they add all these preservatives to it. So that's not healthy. There's a lot of vegan prepared foods. Like if you didn't want to eat a hot dog, why are you eating a vegan hot dog? You know, I mean- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but that's what they do. What, they said they're they're wrong with beyond me. I like beyond yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's what I'm. But those are processed, okay. And and a lot of vegans, a lot not vegan but vegetarians, will still eat cheese, and and that comes. That's so like eating product. meat. You, you might as well eat meat if you're going to eat cheese because that's a, that's the animal protein that, that that that's there to make the cheese. So and then they'll eat a lot of processed foods the pastas, right? Um, bleach flour, um, a lot of the white breads. breads. And so you can have a lot of these people that are overweight, but like as Jackie said, the true vegan doesn't eat any processed foods. Mm -hmm. They eat raw. And those people, it's been well documented that their incidence of heart disease and cancer is much lower. But you, you have to be a strict vegan. If you're and gonna be a vegan, be a vegan. And it's definitely preventative um, for cancer. You know, I find this fascinating because, you know, I'm actually listening to a book right now, an audio book, and I think it's called Cures, something like Health Cures They Don't Want You to Know About by Kevin Trudeau. And he yeah. really exposes the industry and all of the diets and the fads and people go for no sugar or no fat or low fat or all these different things that are really working against the very goals that they have. And they're getting sicker, more unhealthy. They're gaining more weight. And I think even those who live a, a, a vegetarian lifestyle who think they're doing the right thing, you're dropping bombs on everything tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, you got to look and see how we prepare the foods in this country. And so many pesticides and herbicides are on our food. So many genetically modified foods. And it's just not healthy. It's not healthy because that's not the way God intended it. That's amazing. Listen, I have a question. Um, can can you define for us the stages of a woman's hormone cycle and how that impacts her and, and the relationship she's in? Sure. Well, as I said before, um, in puberty, the, say, you know, now puberty is happening as early as nine and 10. But in the previous days, when it was normal, you should Die be between 13 and 15. Then the brain sends out hormones and say, hey, it's time to grow up. Um, you're now going to start having a cycle. So they, it stimulates the ovaries. The ovary starts to produce hormones. The main one is estrogen, right? So then estrogen builds up the endometrium, and the endometrium is the lining of the uterus, and that's why a woman has a period. And that happens 
for say 20, 30 years. And she's fertile because every period she is ovulating and that egg is sitting there waiting for conception. If it doesn't happen, then the progesterone goes away and then she sheds. And every month that happens, right? So now, now you get into the perimenopausal phase. Now you're not ovulating every month. And now you start getting the moodiness because now you have estrogen unopposed with, without the progesterone to balance it. And that's mm -hmm. how a lot of the stuff starts. Um, fibroid starts, fibrocystic breast starts, um, until she finally goes through menopause where the ovary stops producing everything. And then the hot flashes, the night sweats, the heart disease, the bone density reduction, the osteoporosis, all of that, the irritability, the memory loss, the insomnia, all of that happens in the postmenopausal stage. Wow, you know, it, it makes me think about how there are some women out there who have had hysterectomies. So you talk about imbalances, how can any of this help them? Oh yeah, um, and you know, when a woman has a hysterectomy, she'll go through menopause. Let's say they just take the womb and leave the ovaries there. She will still go through menopause five to 10 years sooner than a woman who didn't take out a wound. Okay, so every woman who's had a hysterectomy, um, unless there is a significant family history of cancer, should be in some form of hormone restor restorative therapy. If not, then she can use some of the plant-based stuff to help her with her symptoms. But nonetheless, something needs to be done. Yeah, so they go through a surgical menopause, which you know is drastic. So, you know, they go from making hormones one day to all of a sudden it's gone, you know, the, especially when the ovaries are, are removed. They may have a hysterectomy and still have, leave the ovaries, the ovaries are still there. So they still produce a small amount of estrogen and progesterone, but there are some where everything is just totally gone and they can start on hormone replacement immediately. And um, then that would really help them to feel a lot better. I wanted to comment a little bit on weight and how weight impacts hormones. You took yeah. the words okay. out of your mouth. <laughs> I kind of figured you were going to ask that. But um, what happens is that when a woman is overweight or obese, she has excess adipose tissue, fat tissue. Pause, 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 pause. Can you define for us obesity? What What is obese? What is overweight? Because I know historically the BMI, if I'm saying that correct, number was a lot different than what it is today. And there have been shifts and adjustments along the way for whatever reason. So mm -hmm. what is being overweight? Well, this is it. It really is the amount of fat that you have on your body. Um, you shouldn't have any more than for a woman, 24% of your weight should be fat. For a man, 18% of his weight should be fat. If you use the BMI, it's not going to be accurate especially for African-American women that tends to have, um, you know, a heavier bottom half. Um, let's put it that way. And, so, and heavier bone mass. And, and heavier, heavier bone, bone mass. mass. So the BMI is going to have most, most black women um, in the overweight, if not obese category. So you don't want to look at that. You really want to get your body impedance analysis, which is a test we do in our office. It takes about 10 minutes to do and you figure out what is your percent fat. Because the more fat you have, right, that tells me the more sugar you're eating and the more storage of hormones that you're gonna get. So you store estrogen and then es insulin is also high, which causes polycystic ovarian syndrome and diabetes and a whole lot of things that, that women who are obese are dealing with, increased risk of cancer and so on. So it's not good to be more than 24% of your weight should be fat. Wow. We better get it together. I don't know where I'm at, but we're going to get it together. How about that? <laughs> Can we talk about stress? Because I, um, I remember a couple years ago, I was stressing so bad. My face was twitching. Um, I was having heart palpitations, trouble sleeping. Is that a hormonal issue as well? Yes. Cortisol, yeah. right? <laughs> Cortisol. Yeah, for yeah, sure. That's the culprit. Chronic stress. You know, uh, we're, we're made to um, be stressed when an animal is running after us and then we run into our cave and, you know, then everything comes back down. But the kind of stresses that we're dealing with in today's world, they'd be financial or, 
uh, marriage stress or kids stress or job stress. We can, it's like you're living in a, in a, you're constantly running from that animal, you know? So what happens, Thank your you. cortisol level, cortisol is a bad hormone. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory hormone that reduces your immune system and it can cause you to have an autoimmune disease from being chronically stressed. You get gut issues and it's just a, a bad thing to have. So you don't want to be chronically stressed. If you are, you need an effective way of dealing with it. Did I lose you guys? I think it's frozen. Not sure what happened there. Okay. I think I it's 930 person. now anyway. So I think yeah, these guys well. probably want to get off. So we're going to say goodbye. Time went fast. I think it's still going. Yeah, but we do want you guys to um, come out to the Invigorate Yourself conference on January 5th at That's the Marriott. Marriott Century Boulevard. Every uh, area. And register for that. I think it's going. All right, guys. Take care. All right. Bye -bye. See you next week. Same time, Tuesday at 9. Are we still on there? What happened? Yeah, cut off. Yeah, with Zoom though, he probably had it set for a certain time. Said 30, minutes. Thirty minutes. I mean, yeah. Is that like the max? Oh, it says end meeting here. That's.